Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, we're very serious today, and our guest is going to be Stephen Bendenoon, live from Skype. Uh, he'll be Skyping in from, the, from Prague, from the Czech Republic. And uh, wow, we're going to be getting a powerful presentation. He told me we were just now texting back and forth on Skype. And he said, get your seatbelt on. It's going to be that kind of a program. I asked him a question. I said, where do you see Iran and Israel? Three questions in the next three weeks, the next three months, and the next three years. We're going to lay it out there for you, folks. We see that the scriptures in the Bible are coming to pass right before our very eyes, as it's insane what's been going on. Iran yesterday had a major military parade where they literally showed off their brand new missiles and uh, all of their fancy uniforms, and they were marching down the streets, chanting with big billboards and chanting the whole crowds, down with the USA and down with Israel. Death to the USA and death to to Israel. That was the military parade. Now, meanwhile, Israel was celebrating its 70th uh, anniversary of its independence. Not the 70 years when it became a nation, but it's 70 years of its independence. It was Independence Day and they were celebrating. And, but in Iran, there's what they were doing. They were burning Israeli flags, burning American flags, burning uh, British flags, just, just going off on the West in a show of defiance and hatred. But this is what they believe they're supposed to do. They are radical Shiites. And in their opinion, Allah wants them to create chaos and confusion and to declare Israel no longer to exist, but to be wiped off the pages of history, off the, off the map. If not, the 12th Imam won't return. So yes, this is a very ugly situation developing and the biblical prophecies seem to be coming to pass. Meanwhile, uh, uh, there was a sandstorm. We're going to show you that in a little bit. We'll actually show it to you, uh, a two-minute video clip of it. It's it's mind-boggling. We have all kinds of pictures of an unbelievable sandstorm, the winds blowing from the heavens covering a city in Iran, turning it from daytime to night. And a few hours ago, there was an earthquake that just hit Japan. Very, I mean, excuse me, Iran, very strong, 5.9. It shook the nuclear power plant, the only one they have that Russia built for them. It shook it and, and uh, made, of course, concerns about that reactor. That, that, look at that, earthquake like that happening right after the parade, after you're saying death to America, death to Israel, not a good thing to do. All right, here we go. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Brock Begley's here to produce today's broadcast where we are using the fair usage for teaching. The material we're going to show you, pictures, articles, video, uh, everything that we show you is for teaching purposes, preaching purposes to help you understand that we are living in the last days and the end times are upon us. Let's bring Max in here right now. Max, are you ready to read? We're going to Jeremiah 49. I'm going to start at the 23rd verse, the destruction of Damascus, and then the the proclamation of God bringing Elam or Iran to its knees. Here we go right now. Good to see everybody joining us. Max, King James Version of the Bible. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded and Arpad. For they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus has waxed feeble and turneth herself to flee. And fear hath seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. 
How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets, and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Adad. What? Concerning Kedar, and concerning the kingdoms of Hazor, which Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon shall smite. Thus saith the Lord, Arise ye, go up to Kedar, and spoil the men of the east. Their tents and their flocks shall they take away. They shall take to themselves their curtains, and all their vessels, and their camels. And they shall cry unto them, Fear is on every side. Flee, get you far off, dwell deep, O ye inhabitants of Hazor, saith the Lord. For Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon hath taken counsel against you, and hath conceived a purpose against you. Arise, get you up unto the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care, saith the Lord, which have neither gates nor bars which dwell alone. And their camels shall be a booty, and the multitude of their cattle a spoil. And I will scatter into all winds them that are in the utmost corners, and I will bring their calamity from all sides thereof, saith the Lord. And Azor shall be a dwelling for dragons, and a desolation for ever. There shall no man abide there, nor any son of man dwell in it. Now here comes the prophecy on The word of the Lord that came Iran. to Jeremiah the prophet against Elam in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might, and upon Elam will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven, and will scatter them toward all those winds. And there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies, and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. What? And I will send the sword after them, till I have consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam, and will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days, that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. Unbelievable prophecies in Jeremiah chapter 49. Elam, meaning the same thing as Iran, uh, prophesied by the Lord of calamities that were coming upon Iran. The fact that the God said, look at that verse right there. And we're going to show you that Brock just showed you a picture of the sandstorm. But look at Jeremiah 49 verse 36. And upon Elam or Iran will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and will scatter them toward all those winds. And there shall be no nation whether the outcast of Elam shall come. Uh, we've seen that with the storms. We're seeing it with the earthquakes. We're seeing it with the threat of war. Israel flying into Syria, blowing up that T-4 air base, which is where uh, Iran had their drones, the weaponized drones. Uh, Israel demanding that Iran get out of Syria and back off. But Iran's not leaving. Russia's not leaving. Turkey is coming even more into it. And Assad's Staying in as the puppet master or the puppet of, uh, not the puppet master, but the puppet uh, under uh, Gog. And uh, so we're watching. Now you got the Americans, you got the British, you got the French, you got the, the Free Syrian Army, and you got the rebels, and you got Al Qaeda, and Al Nusa, and ISIS. And uh, it's insane. Uh, and don't forget the, the radical Houthis over in Yemen. Don't forget the Muslim Brotherhood up in the Sinai Peninsula. Don't forget Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Don't forget Hamas in Gaza. I mean, this is unbelievable, folks. But it's all about Israel. It's all about Jerusalem, the cup of trembling, the burdensome stone for all people. I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. But uh, before I even get to the earthquakes and all that, which the, may, the biggest earthquake, Iran, uh, right there, shaking. It literally shook that nuclear power plant. But check out the storm. This, uh, it, it, it's unbelievable. I'm going to play it for you. 
an incredible, incredible scenario developed uh, whenever Brock, you're ready, let me know. And we're going to show this to you. It's about two minutes. This was the storm. The storm that came up on Iran is unbelievable. Here we go. Unbelievable. I mean, and it's, it's different cameras. Look at this thing. It's fast, too. It come up on them. Unbelievable. And then you're going to hear some of the situation developing there. Uh, look at this thing. What? Just incredible. As it just swept through. It turned daytime into night. Unbelievable. Here's some sound. Look how long this thing is. What? It's coming right in the front. Regardez très bien. C'est impressionnant, non Unbelievable. Would you really drive your... C'est la troisième fois que je vois tempête. What is he Sept. doing? What are you doing? Six. No. Cinq. No. Quatre. Sam. Trois. Deux. Un. Zéro. That's crazy. Oh, pauvre. Ben oui. Tu le rends au chien, Look at this, guys. It turned the daytime. Are you serious, folks? It's just incredible footage there. Matter of fact, this came, uh, this uh, footage we got. From the website, of course, strangesounds.org. We want to thank them for that. Doomsday Feelings is the headline. Feelings. It was nothing more than feelings. Trying to forget all the sand in my eyes. I mean, seriously. Doomsday Feelings, as strong as sandstorms, sweep across Yaz in Iran. And these amazing pictures uh, of the storm is insane. Uh, Brock's got some incredible footage for you there. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But this storm, it just kept going and going. And um, an incredible event. But it's right from the pages of the Bible. And it uh, then you have the earthquake, all right, that shook things up. Uh, just uh, hours after this parade in which the Iranians were chanting down with the United States and down with Israel, death to the United States and death to Israel. And the parade, they began to parade through and unveil their new missile systems uh, in the army parade. Uh, this, it was a huge parade, military parade. It marked the National Army Day in Iran as troops showed off the Chasm II uh, missile defense. They were all in their uniforms of different kinds for different branches of their military. Uh, there was a low-altitude missile system called the Chasm II. That's it right there, the Chasm II, uh, designed to confront military drones, unmanned aerial vehicles and low flying planes. Also the latest military system is an upgraded version of the Mens, uh, the uh, Mersad missile system. Local media are reporting that the system has been upgraded by the Iranian experts according to the most advanced technology in the world they are claiming. And with this uh, parade the, the move 
flouts international restrictions on such uh, weapons and will be seen by many as a direct challenge to President Donald Trump's attempt to shut down the country's military program. Iran is expected to deploy these missiles to war zones in the Middle East. Could you say Syria? Uh, including Syria to combat what Iran officials call regional threats. They're talking about primarily Israel. Earlier this week, Iranian Army Airborne Commander Yosef Kwabani, and there you see it, guys, uh, that's the region, uh, he announced the missile unveiling to state media. The range of the missile has doubled to fly 8 to 12 kilometers further uh, compared with the previous version they're reporting. So uh, it's just getting uglier. Uh, given the regional threats, and there's that brand new missile system, uh, given the regional threats they say that they're facing, they can be highly effective in combats and short-range combat zones. In addition, this new missile that Brock's showing you, Iran unveiled some new helicopters armed with rockets and machine guns. Iran has said that these would be deployed for combat in proxy and guerrilla warfare. Uh, Kobani also said, our dear experts in the air industry have had a highly successful performance and have equipped our helicopters with night vision systems. Now don't confuse this General Kobani with that other general, uh, you know, Qasam Salami, who is in charge of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Sounds like some type of a sandwich, but not. Uh, we have also become fully uh, aware in the field of the long-range missile systems. R Iran is among the highest stockpile of ballistic missiles in the region. And uh, they're the ones that supply Hezbollah. They're the ones that supply the Houthi rebels. They're the ones that are helping uh, with Hamas and Gaza as well. And so uh, it's just, it's getting ugly, guys. It's getting uglier. The, it's the tensions building. Stephen Ben Danoon, uh, really an expert uh, when it comes to study in the Middle East, the Israeli News Live. Uh, he'll be joining us in a few minutes, and we're going to break this thing down. I, I I sent him some stuff, and I said, you know, he sent me some stuff last night. We're really looking at today this Iranian-Israeli conflict. And it really does all start in Syria. This is where it's coming. We've known it by reading Psalms 83. We knew that a confederacy would be formed, which is what Iran keeps saying. And it seems that this formation is underway. Now, quickly, go to the earthquakes. I want to show you what's been going on. As the earth continues to shake and quake, there's been 27 earthquakes of, of significance in the last 24 hours. 2.8 Alaska, 2.5 Alaska. It was a 4.5 in Alaska, a 4.0, 3.0. All of these are in Alaska. 2.6 Puerto Rico. And oh, by the way, the power went out in Puerto Rico yesterday. Again, the whole country setting in the dark. The whole island setting in the dark. It's just been miserable there ever since the... Uh, it's been miserable there even before the uh, hurricane... Uh, but uh, Hurricane Maria, but since then it's been literally miserable. 2.6 earthquake Puerto Rico, 2.5 California, 4.3 Mexico, 4.7 Papua New Guinea right there. Also 2.5 earthquake from a chemical explosion in Orville East California. Let me just say this again, a 2.5 earthquake set off from a chemical explosion in Orville East, California. Now, we're, Brock, we're going to do a little research on that, see if we can find out a little bit more about that. That is huge. A 2.6 earthquake in Larson Bay, Alaska, 4.6 in the South Sandwich Islands, 3.6 in Alaska, 2.6 in Puerto Rico, and then boom, 5.5. Now, actually, uh, they've downsized it. It was very shallow. It's, it's, they're recording it originally for hours at 5.9. It's only 10 kilometers deep, and it shook that nuclear 
uh, facility there, the Bashir uh, nuclear power plant that was built in 2011 by the Russians. I covered it when they were building it. I remember that. I remember when they finally got it working in 2012. And I said, here we go. Iran's going nuclear. Well, 3.8 earthquake in Oklahoma, 4.1 Alaska, 3.2 Oklahoma, 3.2 the Dominican Republic, 4.3 Wallace Fatuna, 4.8 Mexico, 2.8 again Oklahoma, shaking a lot down there, 4.9, that's where the explosion was, Brock, right there. Which quake is that? Is that the Iranian? Oh, that's the Iranian, okay. There it is, that's the Iranian quake. Thank you, Brock. 3.3 Stapleton, Nebraska, 4.5. And Nebraska's been shaking a lot lately. A lot. They've had like, like in the last week, they've had several earthquakes in Nebraska. 4.5 Japan, 4.8 Indonesia, and 4.5 in False Pass, Alaska. And so <clears throat> that chemical explosion uh, caught, setting off a 2.5 earthquake in Orville East. That is, uh, that's just insane. Um, but that's exactly what happened in Orville East, California. We'll continue to watch that because uh, what is that about? All right. What is that about? Meanwhile, uh, the solar winds are very slow, 280 kilometers per second. There's been no solar flares because we're in a solar minimum, so that's good. 18 fireballs broke through the Earth's atmosphere and no near-miss asteroids scheduled for today. So it should be a calm day uh, from the heavens uh, as far as that's concerned, okay? So a lot is happening around the world. We're going to talk about it here in a second, but I'm going to uh, share with you um, let's just go to Cuba for a minute. They looks like they're going to have a new leader. Uh, that's right. Uh, Rael Castro, 86 years old is kind of stepping away. He's going to remain in authority, but he's going to turn the day-to-day -day operations of running the nation over to, uh, a man by the name of Miguel Diaz Canal, that man right there, Miguel Diaz Canal, who's been in the uh, Communist Party for over 30-some years, climbing to the top. He's 57 years old, so he's about a year older than me. He feels like he's ready. They feel like he's ready, and he's the man to run the nation on a day-to-day -day basis. Cuba turns to this model Communist Party official, uh, Miguel Diaz-Canal, to steer it through a period of uncertainty when it finally turns the page on the Castro era. The 57-year-old vice president is the preordained choice of Raul Castro as he steps down, ensuring that the vote in the National Assembly to appoint him will be little more than formality. The successor to Fidel and Raul Castro has spent three decades climbing the summit of the Communist Party. He is ideolo his ideology is placed, he is ideally put in position to continue to implement the economic systems and reforms that were originally initiated uh, by Fidel Castro and carried out by the 86-year-old uh, uh, 86-year-old Raul Castro. He will be the first Cuban leader born uh, after the 1959 revolution. And perhaps crucially, for some of the generals that will be under his command, he, the first not to have fought in the revolution. This is a tradition in Cuba of strong men at the head of the state. And uh, this guy is strong. This guy is strong, but does come from humble beginnings and is known by the people as a man of the people. Uh, he's been seen wearing blue jeans and riding his bicycle through the streets. Uh, and some say he likes the Beatles music, and some say he resembles Richard Gere just a little bit. Uh, I don't know about that. Let's not stretch it that far, guys. But anyway, uh, he is the new, he will be the new man that will be running Cuba. What will happen to Cuba after the death of Raul Castro? That's the question. What will this man see? Does he see a more open, liberal, 
uh, uh, Cuba? Does he see a, a try to figure out a way to build better a relationship with America to come be a part of the world community? I mean, this is some of the questions we don't know. Or will he be a tyrant and continue the communistic strong leadership position that he's been trained under for all these years? That's something that we don't know yet. And the Cuban people are still waiting to find out. Uh, it's a question that we do not have the answer for, but we will continue to monitor it. And uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's very interesting. And, you know, I've talked to people who escaped Cuba, and I interviewed, you know, Jose, who was a doctor there, and, who had to, and you know, flee for his life on a raft. Uh, and, and, you know, look, people have really, 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 they've suffered under the Castros over all these years. And it's a sad thing, but most of them don't even know it any other way. I mean, you got a whole generation that have died off and pretty well. And I'm going to welcome all of you with us live at YouTube, over 1,700 of you. Stephen Benanoon is going to join us in a few minutes. Also, I want to say hi to everybody with us at Roku Satellite Television. And those of you guys, I see you guys at new live stream. Also, Periscope, you got some hope. Great to have you with us today. And PaulBegleyProphecy.com, our website. There's, there's chat room in the website at Paul Begley Prophecy. There's one in new live stream. You can text right on the screen at Periscope Live. Or you can come to YouTube Live and join in. And, or I want to say hi to everybody that's uh, listening on the direct radio line. Right now, 64 people have, uh, are listening in. They did this. They dialed this number on their phone. 605 472 5791. That's 605 472 5791. They're listening on their phones. They need an access code. Here it is 322 656 pound. That's 322 uh, 656 pound. So you can access the, the, the broadcast today uh, by phone. Uh, Stephen Benanun will be joining us very shortly. Guys, what's going on in Pittsburgh? What? Mueller. I mean, the, in, this is insane. Brock Begley was telling me this morning as he was coming in this morning. To, uh, he told me, he said, did you see what's going on in Pittsburgh? They're preparing for massive riots and major demonstrations in preparation for Trump firing Robert S. Mueller III. I said, What? Pittsburgh police are preparing with riot gear for a large-scale protest if Trump fires Robert Mueller, the special counsel. Uh, according to reports, President Trump suggested yesterday that he is in no rush to fire either special counsel Robert S. Mueller III or Mueller's boss, Deputy Attorney General Rod J. Rowenstein. But that hasn't stopped thousands of people all across the country planning protest in the event the president does choose to fire Mueller and Rowenstein and uh, over the Russian investigation. You know, the Russian collusion, confusion. Look at this. Organization, organizing. Project Mueller, they're calling it. What? It, who, is George Soros behind this, guys? Is I can smell. Mmm, that stench. A, a stench of Soros money. Oh, that's going to fund this in ugly, rioting, protesting, vandalism, civil disobedience, uh, uh, terroristic. Uh, they will go mad. They will break windows. They will burn down buildings. Some cities will be worse than others. I'm surprised Pittsburgh, but, but you know, Pittsburgh is such a good city, good people. And they love Trump there. So I'm not so sure it's really, I, I think what you got here is these are going to be, what I mean by stage, they're being pre-organized. Look, they've got posters and they got committees. It's Project Mueller. Yes, it's, it's, it's being completely organized by this man. And do, can I ask a question? And who, if you were going to organize a nationwide rioting tear gas protest, there's two people you need. You need first the money of George Soros, 
And you need the organizational skills of probably the world's best community organizer. Barack Obama. I mean, that's really the two people you need. Then you can throw in fake news, mainstream, lamestream, fake news media. You got to have CNN because they're going to have those little cameras everywhere. And Anderson Cooper's going to get punched in the gut like he did in Cairo. Remember when they were, it was CNN, it was fueling that thing, that Arab Spring. CNN helped push the Arab Spring 24 hours a day. Uh, well, I'm just saying that's back, that's back, Brock, when he was training to become a community organizer. Yeah, that's Barry Soto. Uh, but when he became president of the United States, he came, he ran. I mean, he was the, he was the king of organization. I'm not saying he's, I'm saying if you were, if, you, if it was you, if you had to organize a nationwide protest, you would need two things. Tons of money to pay all these protesters and to pay Antifa and, and to pay some of these other radical groups. To tear things up, and you would need a community organizer. And so they've already begun. You can see they're already beginning. I'm not saying that that's who's behind it. I don't know, but they're doing it. Somebody's doing it. And I can smell, uh, I can smell uh, uh, Soros's money. I can really smell it, but I'm not, I'm, again, I can only smell it. I can't see it, uh, and I'm just assuming it. But somebody's. It's Project Mueller. They know he's going to get fired. In other words, has it leaked? Has the mayor of Pittsburgh who got on the phone and got a hold of the police chief and said, get these guys or listen to this. The city of Pittsburgh sent word. Pittsburgh's Bureau of Police has ordered all of their plain clothes police detectives and officers. Get your uniform, your riot gear, your billy clubs, all of your riot gear and keep it in your car with you. Starting today, Thursday, today, right now, because at any moment, a massive explosion of rioting could break out because Trump just, uh, did they hear something? Is there, is there, is there been a leak? Is Comey been leaking stuff again? You know who Comey is. James Comey and his homies and his phony testimony. Well, now he's running around. He's on The View. He's on Stephen Colbert. He's on every late night shows. He's, he's selling books. He's pushing all of this. I mean, maybe he's, he's the leaker. He's the king of leaks. Uh, he said he's the leaker. The president called him a slime ball. I didn't. But uh, listen, it's ugly what's happening. We don't need a riot. We don't need cities on fire. We don't need this in America. Do we need this? No. Oh. Why is the Russian collusion confusion still going on in the first place? I don't want to get stuck on this, but I mean, are you serious? Pittsburgh Bureau of Police has ordered its plainclothes detectives to bring full uniforms, riot gear to work Thursday morning until further notice. Keep it in your car. Get ready for gas, tear gas, water cannons, billy clubs, rubber bullets, whatever needs to be done. And we've received information of potential large scale protest is gonna happen in central business district. They even know where it's gonna happen. Trump has not fired Mueller yet. I say yet because he probably, I hope, I, I should say, I don't know which way that's gonna go. Uh, I hope we have peace. I wish Mueller would just end this investigation. Let's get on with the business. Look, Trump's trying to put together a peace ar arrangement with North and South Korea right now, guys. I mean, we could have a chance to end the threat of Asian Armageddon here. And we're still fighting in the background and organizing Project Mueller. We, uh, and we have never found Hillary's emails. Has anybody ever found Hillary's missing emails except those 400,000 emails that's on Anthony Weiner's laptop from Uma Abedin. We're still missing those 33,000 that were critical. All that bleach and all that rubbing with a cloth and all those hammers busting cell phones. I mean, we still don't know what's going on with that. Are you serious? I want to welcome all of you that are with us live uh, and just want you to know Stephen Ben Noon helps sort this stuff out. Stephen Ben Noon can bring some uh, uh, bring some understanding to this, I think, maybe. Um, uh, 
uh, he probably doesn't want to even get into that because uh, it's just a uh, Trump has not fired Mueller yet. But if he does, I hope he takes Rod Rowenstein out with him and uh, clean the whole thing up, drain the swamp, and uh, put an end to this. If he does. I said if he does. Oh, by the way, we need to pray for Oklahoma, guys. Have you seen the wildfires burning there? What? Have you seen the wildfires? 50 homes have now burnt down. Two people are dead. This has been an unbelievable experience. Massive fires. Oklahoma. Uh, raging, the dryness there, a drought of biblical proportion, and uh, it's, it's ugly what's taking place there. It really is. Pray for the people of Oklahoma. Keep praying for them, folks, because it's so dry, and the, the winds have been so strong that it's been almost in, unstoppable. Two independent shelters are now open for residents displaced by the uh, Rhea fire. The First Baptist Church uh, over there on Noble Avenue uh, in Wat Watanga, also Elm Grove Community Church, they've opened up their church as a shelter. That's over on uh, County Road 226 in Chester, Oklahoma. We appreciate these uh, churches stepping up. You ever notice something? When, when, whenever there's a chaos, it's always the churches that step up. You got all this money, though, for FEMA, and, and, and on the, you know, got all this cash sitting around uh, for all of this stuff, but it always comes down to the American people and the churches and, and the Christians. And you know, Look at this raging. Look at this raging. Unbelievable raging of uh, fires burning out of control in Oklahoma. Our prayers are for all of our brothers and sisters there. Uh, last year, you know, we were, uh, we held a coffee in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we're on television every Sunday night in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, and we've got a lot of members of our online church out of Oklahoma, and we're praying for your safety as the fires continue to burn and continue to rage in these times. They're trying every way to put it out. The, the planes are flying over top. The helicopters are dropping all these chemicals. They're trying their best to kill the fire, smother it somehow. But it's been so dry. The worst droughts right now of all of America is Oklahoma. Okay, Oklahoma. Very dry. Look at the amount of uh, acreage that has been consumed in this fire. I believe it's over 400,000 acres. Uh, it's just been unbelievable, and it still burns, and I'm just praying for uh, the people of Oklahoma, for our brothers and sisters in Christ that are there. I plead the blood of Jesus over every one of you. Oh, by the way, you need to also keep praying for Mexico, especially down in Acapulco, Mexico, because uh, it's just becoming, it's sort of like the OK Corral. They had a shootout down there. 16 people are dead. Six of them were police officers. Ten were the suspected uh, re uh, just criminals, uh, the, you know, part of the drug cartel establishment, six police officers, 10 suspects, all killed, two confrontations in southern Mexican state of Guerrero uh, yesterday. State security spokesman Roberto Alvarez said the first shootout occurred late Tuesday night. Uh, there you see they're, they're packing them out. When a state police convoy came under attack, um, and then on the Pacific coast, also they said one policeman was wounded, and police returned fire, killing ten suspected gunmen during a 30-minute shootout with assault rifles. Can you imagine 30 minutes of a shootout? Unbelievable! And what Alvarez said may have been retaliation for the first attack. Gunmen later ambushed a state police convoy 20 miles north of that area and killed six police officers in an ambush. Killed them all. Just a horrible scene. Officers have been visiting nine families in the hamlet of La Malilas who had been considered at risk because of drug gang violence that has plagued the area. Police have been assigned to perform periodic checkups on these nine families. That which uh, whose members include 54 people 
out of nine families. So these cops were over there kind of checking on them, making sure good security. And they realized they were targeted. And as the police were on their way back as a convoy, they ran into a roadside ambush in which they were shot dead, all six of them. They say, and uh, so hundreds of people have fled their homes and towns in the mountains of the state there because of the gang threats and violence. And last week, soldiers and police had to escort a convoy of 92 people terrorized by the drug cartels out of their mountain hamlet further north, deep in the mountains of Guerrero. Uh, the convoy of mostly elderly women and children left the hamlet of Laguna uh, because they fear that the drug gangs that operate in the area. Guerrero has Mexico's third highest homicide rate at 64 murders per 100,000 people. The state has become one of the main opium poppy growing areas in Mexico. Now you might understand why the drugs gangs are protecting the area. And a large number of the splinter gangs fight for control of the drugs and extortion trade. Despite being home to a once glamorous resort like Acapulco, the United States State Department has placed Guerrero on the highest level four do not travel because advisory because of violence. Acapulco, Mexico, don't go there. According to the United States Department travel warning, okay? So it's ugly, guys, what's going on in this world. You know, the Bible says in the last days, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And uh, the earth was filled with violence. And so the earth was plagued, basically, by the uh, violent acts that keep coming upon the planet. We are witnessing it. We've been watching it. We know it's real. Oh, by the way, guys, in Japan, a volcano has exploded, an eruption uh, this volcano, Loyama, Loyama erupted today, massive explosion. One person is dead. People are leaving the area. This thing had not erupted in 250 years. What? What's going on there? Okay. So, uh, Japan volcano, look at this. Loyama blows its lid and blows the top of the mountain off. First time it's erupted in 250 years. Loyama explodes in an eruption. No, I didn't say yo mama. I said yo lama. Now you got me confused. Loyama, excuse me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's a big eruption. Pray for uh, that area. I don't know exactly how close the towns are to it. I mean, if there hasn't been an eruption in 250 years, my fear is people have migrated slowly up closer because they feel like, hey, it hasn't blown in so long. I mean, everything's going to be fine. You know, you don't expect to wake up Thursday morning and the volcano erupt in Japan, a volcano that's been sitting there dormant for 250 years, but it has happened. All right. So, uh, keep an eye on that. And, uh, again, Stephen Ben is going to join us in a few minutes. We're going to be talking about Israel versus Iran. Now some quick information on this. The, uh, we know that the, uh, chemical inspectors yesterday were shot at. They were fired on trying to get into the area to inspect where the chemical weapons were used there in Duma. And the chemical and weapons inspectors uh, were fired on. There's confusion right now because we don't know who did it. Uh, the UN security team doing reconnaissance at the site of an attack in the Syrian town of Doma, which is in the outskirts of Damascus, has come under gunfire. The head of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons has said further delay in the arrival of the chemical weapons inspectors. First of all, the Syrian army wouldn't let them in. The Russians were already in there. Uh, the second of all, now they got shot at. We don't know who shot at them. We don't know if that was the, the rebels, the, the free Syrian army funded by America, or was it 
Assad's uh, military? Or was it Al-Qaeda? Or was it Al-Nusa? Or was it some kind of ragtag group still hanging out from the ISIS days? Or was it Assad's uh, military? I mean, we don't really know. We, know. we can't figure it out. This thing is such a mess. Um, there's enough blame to go around, guys. There's enough blame. I mean, look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you the United States is as pure as the wind driven snow in all of the stuff that's been happening in Syria. And I'm not going to blame it all on Russia. I'm not going to blame it all on America. Uh, you, if you don't forget, you got the Iranians in there. Um, you know, look, things get ugly in war, okay? Things get very ugly when there's war, when there's literally live fire, bombs, missiles, killing. And so I don't know. I just know that somebody used gas. We got a bunch of people dead and a lot of folks sick and hurt. And But that's not the only way people are being killed, guys. That's the le Actually, the gassing is the least of the problems. Do you realize how many people have been beheaded and executed and raped and murdered and mutilated and just uh, it's it's went on ISIS and the Arab Spring and the whole thing and then here come the other factions that's got involved everybody's fighting for the for the you know Turkey don't forget Turkey everybody's fighting for the oil everybody's fighting for the area and that's why Stephen Benenoon's going to come join us because Iran now you can see there's a direct squaring off taking place the Americans do not want to fight Russia and Russia does not want to fight America this is plain. Also, Israel does not want to find Russia, and Russia does not want to fight Israel. They've, those, those people, or those groups, have kind of squared away, kind of pulled back. What you do see is Iran wants to fight Israel, and Israel wants to fight Iran. Israel is saying they have to take the offensive. They're flying into Syria. They're blowing up Iranian outposts. They're blowing up Iranian drone uh, locations. They are not playing in. Israel believes they have to push Iran back. They got to not let Iran get a foothold in Syria. And uh, so they've been aggressive, but Iran has already flew a drone in there that Israel ended up shooting down. So this, this is getting serious here, folks. Look at all the different groups and factions that are all over the area there in Syria and in Israel. You can see the positions that the Israeli government's setting up. Now you can see the Russians are right there on the border of Israel. Uh, you can see the Iranians are over there. You can see that, uh, I, I can't tell who that is. Is that the Palestinian? Who is that? Is that Hezbollah? That's Hezbollah, I think, or Lebanon. Different nations and groups. Uh, so it's just ugly what we've been witnessing for seven, over seven years. It's just been heartbreaking, to be quite honest with you. Um, but this is the time we're living in, okay? And Iran had their parade, and they showed off all of their weaponry. And then there's been an earthquake, and there's been a sandstorm, and there's been all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, Stephen Ben-Nanoon going to join us in a few minutes. We're going to try to get a better understanding of what's actually going on here. But certainly uh, what we're seeing is uh, just some incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, I don't know if we're buffering or not. Um, last night was the most strangest thing ever happened to me in all the years that I've been doing this. I've never had this before, but a PDF file that was on my screen just went shaking like this and went right off the screen. When I went back to go back to the email from which this PDF file of the list of Bilderberg participants was on, when I went back to the email to get it, that email sent to me was not on my email anywhere. So then I went and looked in the, I looked at the delete side. I looked everywhere. Then I went into my program. I looked to see on my downloads. I went to my documents. That email is nowhere to be found, and that PDF file is nowhere to be found on this computer. That is impossible as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that is impossible. The only thing I could think of is that uh, can they reach in and grab it? Uh, you know, can they do one of those 
abracadabra. Gonna reach in and grab it. I don't know if that's what they did or not. I don't know if the NSA, I don't know. I don't know. But I had the list. And it, was, it happened to me live on the air. And if you were watching last night, you guys know I, I, I was so stunned and frustrated. I, was, I lost words. I play, people suggested just play a song. So I played a song. I looked for it everywhere. It was nowhere to be found. All right. I'm just wondering if we're getting ready to bring Stephen Ben Noon in here. And I'm just praying that we don't have any interruption because we're talking Iran versus Israel. I mean, Iran versus Israel. That is huge when you're talking about the sensitivity of that. But we're doing it very respectful. We're going to do it from a biblical standpoint as well as we're going to look at the current situation right now. We can see that all the players of Gog and Magog are on the, on the, they're all on the field. We can see that uh, Psalms 83, the very words are being spoken almost on a daily basis. We can see that Iran and, uh, uh, has, has really moved closer and closer into setting up shop, and they really don't care. They are all about Israel. We know that the Bible said in the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, that Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling, this burdensome stone for all people. All that burdens themselves with it shall be broken in pieces. We know that yesterday the Iranians held a military parade in which they did, right there it is, that's live from, that's pictures from yesterday. They're burning American and Israeli flags. And uh, the Ayatollah Ali Khomeini rode out brand new missiles they had big billboards on trucks going down the middle of the parade route that one side said, death to America. The other one said, death to Israel. This is supposed to be a military parade. Now, it was their army day. They were celebrating army day in Iran while Israel was celebrating its 70th anniversary of its independence. Not its 70th anniversary of a nation yet. That's coming up, of course, May 14th. But the celebration of their 70 years of independence and you can see the Iranians, they were marching in uniform and, and, and as if they're preparing to go to war, as if they are absolutely preparing to go to war with Israel. And don't forget this. There's two threats on the table that have not been fulfilled yet. Russia has said we will retaliate against the United States and France and Great Britain for that strike a week ago, and they said, and it will be painful. Now, that's what Vladimir Putin said, and they haven't done it yet, but they even reiterated it again. It will be painful. I don't know if it's going to be a cyber attack, an EMP, a military assault on something. We don't know yet, but he, that he has not done it yet, but he reminded us of it yesterday. And then also, Iran has said, mark our words we will retaliate for Israel blowing up that T-4 drone site in Syria. And it hasn't happened yet. So you have both Russia and Iran making proclamations that they will. There is going to be a retaliatory strike. I'm, not, uh, I'm just saying you got to be awake and realize this is going to happen. Or at least those two leaders have made that proclamation. So... I think Trump is sitting back just waiting. I think Netanyahu is not sitting back and waiting. Netanyahu is actually on the offensive. He's taking, he wants to take the battle to Iran. And it looks like the battlefield may be Syria for a while. Eventually, folks, though, it does spill over the Golan Heights into Israel. We're going to take a break. We're going to get Stephen Benanoon on the line on, on uh, Skype and bring him in. You'll be able to see him as well. We're going to have him live from Prague in the Czech Republic. He's going to join us. We will be right back. Don't go nowhere with this, the next hour on the coming apocalypse. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know about His return. 
Get it now at my website. I have a book called Mark of the Beast, RFID, a powerful illustration of the last days. It is filled with biblical prophecy, current world events, and an end time apocalyptic scenario. This novel will keep you on the edge of your seat. 18 things I wrote has come to pass, including that Pope Benedict would resign. Get a copy of it right now. It's amazing. Mark of the Beast at my website. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're gonna answer the question. Millions of people wanna know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. Heidi Begley's got a brand new book called Finding My Father. Heidi, this is a miracle journey, isn't it? A miracle how you found your father. A journey just full of miracles. He left when I was three months old, found him again when I was 30 years old, and it's just miracle after miracle. It's a page turner, it's a tear jerker, <laughs> and I guarantee it will change people's lives. So get a copy of her book right now at my website. Our society is moving towards Marxism. Because of what we did on this day, at this defining moment, change has come to America. Our revolution now becomes your revolution. Something's wrong, and we all know it. I'm Charlie Daniels, and I'm here to tell you about it. The nation has been hijacked by international forces, the dark side bent on global governance. Alex Jones. What is the goal? It is to create a one world government. It's as old as time itself. Authoritarian officials with jackboots could say, your papers, please, and stop you and demand to see your ID. The Department of Homeland Security issued a declaration to all law enforcement, state, local, and federal, saying that the future threats to America were right-wing Christian groups, Second Amendment groups, pro-life groups, Wake up, America. And returning veterans. While you still have time. Just think of this country again as one nation under God. America with borders, a nation of patriots who are proud of our heritage, our achievement. Now it remains necessary for all Americans to draw such a line in the sand. Time to ride, boys. We need a thousand Paul Revere's. Revelation the movie. Dot info. No. Is a powerful concept. A brand new book I've just finished called 
Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land, and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. Are you serious? Are you serious, folks? You are in for a treat. We are so glad. Skyping in with us live from Prague and the Czech Republic, of course, is Israeli News Live, the main man, Stephen Bendenoon, who just does a tremendous job, has a great, great YouTube channel, and uh, uh, just a real good friend of ours. We, this is the day we wanted to bring him in and talk about the Middle East. Stephen, great to have you on the broadcast. Thank you, Pastor Bagley. It's good to be here. And of course, it's been very eventful uh, last couple of weeks in the Middle East and uh, with no signs of slowing down. Uh, you know what? You're exactly right. It seems like every night somebody was bombing somebody or somebody was attacking. Uh, and you and I both was covering that when Israel was firing missiles into Syria and like nine of their missiles had been intercepted, and some of them got through. And, and then the, the I had 17 sources that said that Israel had flown in there. and But none of those sources except Breitbart were American. They were all European. They were all Middle Eastern. And they were true. But I, over here in the, in the uh, land of fake news media, uh, they only report what they're supposed to, or they're told, I guess, to report. That's, it's sad, Brother Paul, because uh, Western media is really, really falling behind the eight ball when it comes to uh, reporting what's truth, what's actually going on, and uh, I, I'm just bewildered by it. You know, I, th I think the first one I've actually seen to come out and really make a stand since all this began was Tucker Carlson, and uh, that kind of shocked me, uh, but, uh, but you're right, we're just not seeing... Uh, anyone willing to cover what's happening there, uh, at least with credibility and honesty. And, you know, it's a very volatile situation. It's a volatile situation for Israel as well uh, in many different ways. And I'm very concerned about what the future holds in the very, very near future for Israel. You know, that's that's a great point. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I sent you a, a little email there and said, can you, what do you think is the situation? Where do you see Israel and Iran in the next three weeks, the next three months, and the next three years? And I think that that's a good way to look at this because it's probably going to be in phases. I'm with you. I am concerned about what's, what's going to happen. Look, 70th anniversary of Israel as a nation is coming up in just a few days on May 14th. And the U.S. Embassy is going to open the same day. And you've got the Iranians... Uh, who are, are really threatening Israel now. They are, you know, they've always said it, but I, this is different now. They've already flown a drone into Israel. They've been creeping closer and closer, setting up outposts and, and uh, air bases and places there in Syria. Uh, it's as if they are, and then we just heard today there's more, they have more uh, hardware, more ammunition, more tanks, more stuff coming, more troops are being deployed into Syria. So, Stephen, what do you see going to happen? Let's take the next three weeks headed into this anniversary. And you also got Hamas, okay? But what do you see between Israel and Iran in the first short term in the next three weeks? Well, Pastor Paul, it's very obvious to me that at this point right now, um, Prime Minister Netanyahu wants to drag Iran into a war. Uh, and it's not only uh, the Prime Minister, we're also looking at the Saudis. They want to get uh, Iran into a war with Israel so that while the U.S. presence is there in the Middle East, uh, this battle can actually be waged. And, 
you know, yes, we do have Iran threatening Israel. We do have Iran moving a military presence in Syria. Of course, they've been there for the last seven years combating ISIS alongside of uh, the uh, President Assad's uh, military and with the Russian forces inside the country. But it's not of course, helping matters when uh, the, when Israel struck the T4 air base, which killed, uh, including one of their colonels, that the Iranians for the first time actually made public uh, the deaths of their military personnel that was that was killed in that airstrike. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said that he, they were doing it. Uh, as a result of their own security, they're very concerned about the Iranian presence in Syria, and uh, and at the same time, you know, we realize that uh, this situation is very volatile. It's very explosive, but. Uh, you know, Pastor Paul, one thing that I have really been watching closely, though, are the words of uh, uh, Saman Tov, who ha happens to be a mutual friend of ours, and what he has stated about this uh, war in the Middle East and, of course, uh, the bigger picture that's at play. And we had him here on Israeli News Live just recently, uh, and he spoke about how that the... When President Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke at the, the conference, I forget where that was and, and exactly when, but they brought up this regional players involved in a Middle East peace process. Uh, and even when I spoke at the conference in, in uh, Jerusalem, uh, Yehuda Glick was at that conference and Saman Tov approached him and asked him directly about this regional players. At that time, it, it, that was last year, that this had just been announced. And since then, Samantov has done far more research about it. And it, it's a move towards a, uh, a regional, uh, it's a regional move that is actually being uh, taken place in Israel, where there's going to become an Israel that, as Samantov puts it, it will no longer list, exist as the state of Israel, but rather as a regional block of nations. And it's very concerning to me, what? Pastor Paul, because um, the identity of Israel needs to remain the identity of Israel. And, and to see the Middle Eastern nations, which happens to be the Gulf states that are working, uh, with uh, the uh, with the prime minister as well as uh, Washington and other players involved in this, this would actually bring about the non-existence of the state of Israel. But that being stated, the Iranian war is what is in the way. They they're wanting to take Iran out of the picture because. Uh, and Syria as well, and even Lebanon, because these three countries here will not go along with this plan. So you're saying, now, so you're saying that there's a regional move to try to almost globalize Israel, allowing different nations to have position and and influence within the nation of Israel. So maybe, and I don't know where this. Uh, ideals coming from if it's coming out of Jared Kirshner, if it's something that the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, you know, is this the covenant with many uh, potentially that they're working on? Uh, but what's in the way? What you're saying is what's in the way of that happening, which I don't want that to happen at all. But um, but what you're saying is that what's slowing that process down is Iran's ideology, hostility toward Israel that has to be dealt with, the Syrian nation that's in a state of chaos that has to be secured, and, um, and Hamas uh, still wanting all of the, you know, they don't want a two-state solution. They, they still want it all. So you got, you got three things going on there that's slowing that plan down, although I don't like that plan. So Samatov, uh, and I'm going to be in Israel in a few weeks, and I'm going to interview him when I get there. I really got to again. He's always a great interview, as you know. He's always got great insight, what's happening. Um, but Samatov has, has put something out there here, Stephen. Did Glick confirm this regional player concept? 
This is what was interesting. Uh, Rabbi Glick actually said he was totally unaware of what the president and prime minister were actually speaking about. Uh, but uh, Samantov said that it is uh, very obvious it is part of the New World Order agenda. And, of course, what they're wanting to do is internationalize Jerusalem, and Jerusalem would become uh, uh, an international city. In fact, the Vatican, according to uh, the plans with Shimon Peres, uh, that he signed with the Pope of Rome in 1993, also the Palestinians, uh, Yasser Arafat in 1992, signed uh, with uh, Cardinal Ratzinger at the time, which is also known as Pope Benedict, they had signed the agreement that would give East Jerusalem to the Palestinians, West Jerusalem would go to the Israelis, but the old city would come under the hegemony of uh, Vatican control with a United Nations force over this because they're planning to make Jerusalem the capital of the New World Order. And I think this what? is one reason why we're seeing this move, and this is also the reason why we have the Middle East War, is because uh, when General Wesley Clark said that these nations would be taken out, it's because it's a revived Roman, or excuse me, a, a revived Babylonian empire that they're trying to put together. And this is what we're faced with right now, Pastor Paul. Uh, and this is where it's headed. Uh, whether or not Iran is really, I don't think Iran is so much an obstacle as far as like they're trying to save the day. I don't think that that's the issue here, but Iran is is just an obstacle for whatever their reasoning is i'm not sure well, their reason, but it is definitely the, a new world order move yeah it's a new world order move that the vatican definitely wants to be a part of taking control of the old city of jerusalem so in other words the new world order would do is take east jerusalem give that to the palestinians create a two-state solution with a palestinian state West Jerusalem would remain the capital of Israel and the rest of the land of Israel. But the old city itself would come under Vatican rule uh, and international rule, and they would make that the, the capital of the new world order. Well, it, that might be why the, uh, the Bible says that Jerusalem will become this cup of trembling in Zechariah 12. Folks, uh, it says, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens, laid the foundation of earth, formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. So there'll be, that might be where the Iranians play a little bit of a role, being part of the conflict for the land. And in that day, will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. That sounds like the new world order trying to take the, the capital. That's exactly right. And if you remember, Pastor Paul, the uh, young man, Nathan, who had the near-death experience in Israel, uh, when he gave his analysis of what had happened to him, of course, always remember, because there's a lot of people that oppose, especially Christian believers, because he speaks about works, uh, uh, things that are more in, in line with Judaism. But I do believe that a lot of his thinking is based on uh, his opinion, based on what he had actually saw. But getting to the point I want to make here, the Nathan spoke about Jerusalem being where everything begins over this whole regional war in the, that starts in the Middle East and Syria. He said the first thing they're going to want to do, he said, all the world, all the nations are going to want Jerusalem. He's right. He said they won't even look at the Israeli people. They're not going to care about the Jewish people living there. They just want Jerusalem. Now, yep. we say this. President Trump basically kicked off that that whole scenario of Jerusalem, a cup of trembling, when he declared Jerusalem Israel's capital. Now, it sounded like a good thing, but you kind of got to watch what happens, because when his plan was leaked, it's still, and even in his verbiage, he still left out the Temple Mount. And in the leaked plan, it also showed the old city of Jerusalem coming under a U.N. control. All right. But 
what happened then? We see in his plan, really, West Jerusalem goes to the to the Jewish people, to Israel, and East Jerusalem was up for negotiation. Right. But if you look at what China's president, Xi Jinping, you look at President Erdogan, they all say East Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Right. But here was a key thing that a lot of people missed. Iran steps up and says, no, all of Jerusalem is Israel's capital. <laughs> what did that tell us? They were not, they're not part of a new world order agenda. No. You're talking right. about Iran. You're, 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 I agree. You're saying Iran's. It's not, it's not to say that Iran is righteous when I say this, but the point is President Trump, the European leaders, China, uh, Erdogan, they all were, were parroting the very negotiations that were secretly signed between the Vatican and Shimon Perez and Yasser Arafat, although they were signed separate occasions. They were all parroting the New World Order agenda. And the very person that I know that was a close friend of Gulen Fagan, the supposed mastermind of the uh, failed coup of Turkey, stated that Erdogan would be given a great portion in the New World Order if he did the dirty work for NATO, which is exactly what he's doing. But going to all, all the nations coming against Jerusalem, what did Erdogan do? He goes and he meets with 57 Islamic uh, nation leaders and he says, we have got to go against Jerusalem. Then he goes and he meets with the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis, and what do they say? That's one thing we have in common, Jerusalem. Right. So it's a he's the one that's going to rally the nations against Israel. It's not Russia. We got to, as big as the biggest concern, right. it's Erdogan right. and his staged coup only gaining power in the Middle East. And you you know, you got a great perspective on this on the Turkey and Erdogan. Uh, since the staged coup is over, he has butchered his opponents. I mean, he took the opportunity then to just squash everybody that had a different ideology than he did, uh, imprison them, execute them, uh, you know, take them from their jobs. And he, you know, it was unbelievable. So now he's running Turkey as a, a ruthless rod of iron leader. And he wants Jerusalem that he wants it so bad. He's salivating. And, you know, Stephen, you can go back to the days of Walid Shubat. Walid Shubat, and I've had him on the air, we had him on our show two, three times. Every time I do, he keeps saying, Paul, Erdogan, I don't know if he's the Antichrist, but he is my number one candidate because of who he is, because of where he's coming from, because of the role that Turkey will play. They're part of NATO. They're part of the Arab League. You know, they're, they're just, he goes, you got to understand, he may be the Antichrist. If not, he's going to do the bidding uh, and do the dirty work. You're right, Stephen, to do the dirty work. And so, so are you saying that what we're witnessing all the pieces and parts is really Jerusalem is truly becoming this cup of trembling. And so it, it, there's no question about it. It's biblical prophecy, isn't it? It's literally biblical prophecy. Absolutely. And, you know, I know that uh, me and Wally have, have butted heads on some issues in the past. But one thing that me and him see pretty much eye to eye on is when it comes to Turkey and their role. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that Wally would say he can't say for certainty it's the Antichrist. But. I do agree with him. He is, and Walid also says that uh, uh, that Erdogan, the Turkish government, is is the leading of the Gog of Magog war that will happen. And I agree with him on right, that. He's right. Uh, we may differ a little bit on some of the minor details in there, but we're pretty much on the same page on that. And uh, and I have to tell you, Pastor Paul. When it comes to Erdogan, where we really found out that he was the dirty guy, was from Seymour Hirsch and his own parliament member, Aaron Erdem, when he actually aided and abetted, uh, this was brought before the Turkish parliament when he helped the ISIS militants along with CIA yes. officials to smuggle the sarin gas yes. from from uh, uh, Lith excuse me, what was that, uh, Libya yes. under. Hillary Clinton, yep. and they brought it through the Syria or the Turkish uh, borders and used it against the children in Syria in 2013. Yes, you are it's so right. And Hillary was a part of that. They yes. they took they took. See, that was part of the Arab Spring. Okay, and that was the 
was to overthrow Muammar Gaddafi. They overthrew Gaddafi and they took the sarin gas that Gaddafi had in Libya. They smuggled it through Turkey into Syria and, and, and ISIS got their hands on it. And then we had that massive chemical weapon attack in 2013. The Clintons were in on this. Matter of fact, Obama was the orchestrator of the whole Arab Spring in the first place. He started calling for the Tunisian leader, Ben Ali, and for Hosni Mubarak of Egypt. And then he said, Muammar Gaddafi. And then he said, uh, you know, uh, Ali Balala Saleh over there in Yemen. And, he, he just, and then he said Assad. He was literally trying to pick off and create total chaos, which he did in the Middle East. And I'm glad you bring it up. Turkey does not have clean hands. And oh, by the way, don't forget about Erdogan's son, Stephen. He was buying the oil from ISIS and pennies on the dollar, but that was helped fund ISIS' ability to go around beheading and butchering the Yiddies and the Christians and the Kurds. And so they, these guys have got tons of blood on their hands, plus oil, don't you think? Absolutely. And it was the Germans that were buying the oil. Uh, that was what was interesting. And of course, the accusations came out that the U.S. knew about it, but just turned a blind eye while the oil sales were going on. And, they, and probably uh, did. This, this is why, Pastor did. Paul, he faked the coup that he did, because yep. when when Erdogan, excuse me, Aaron Erdogan stood before the parliament of the Turkish government and the justice minister of Turkey as well brought the accusations against Prime Minister Erdogan that he had allowed the chemical weapon sarin gas all the evidence. He had a file this thick, Pastor Paul, in his hand, standing there before the parliament. You can anybody could go on YouTube, look up Aaron Erdem Syrian chemical weapons. You'll find that find it. There's one that's got actually the subtitles. You can watch in English, but you can see the original debate before Parliament, and he indicts the Prime Minister because Erdogan was not present. He was Prime Minister in 2013, and the sad thing was is then Erdogan began imprisoning all the journalists. That is brought up in the Turkish parliament. He's imprisoning the journalists. And in fact, the justice minister said, it's not that the journalists told a lie, but they exposed a state secret. It was an open admission by the Turkish government that Erdogan was smuggling sarin gas into, and also he also brought up the, the issue of arming Al Qaeda, against the Syrian government. And Erdogan, Aaron Erdem made the most provocative statement when he said, the blood of the children of Syria are on the hands of the Turkish government. Wow. Folks, Stephen Benanoon is with us. His uh, Israeli News Live org. Stephen Benanoon, he has a great YouTube channel and really is the leading expert when it comes to up to the minute, stays on top of what's going on in both Europe and the Middle East. He really does. J.D. Farg, i got to give him a lot of credit. J.D. Farg is awesome as well when it comes to the Middle East. Stephen Benanoon, though, truly has this great perspective because he's you know part of the time he's in Israel, part of the time he's in America, and part of the time he's in the in Europe there in Prague, and he's able to uh, get hear the media from all three different perspectives of the world which is important, really, when you're trying to understand what's really going on, because all of them have a little spin on it. They all spin it to some degree, and uh, you can discern it. It's where you have to have the ability to discern and listen to know what's going on. This was a great point about Erdem Edom, uh, what they did with Turkey. Now, Stephen, uh, while we're still about Iran and Israel, we got to talk a little about Benjamin Netanyahu. I mean, he seems to be going under the same kind of pressure as Trump is here in America. And that is enemies of the state, enemies within his own world. I mean, here's a guy dealing with the Iranians. He's dealing with everything going on in Syria and uh, uh, trying to move forward his nation of Israel. And he's got people trying to take him out of power. You and I, the last time we were together in Florida earlier in uh, February, you know, uh, we heard what Roger Stone said. They were trying to get rid of him. That was true. They were absolutely planning on removing him that day. What is your take on now? What's going on with Benjamin Netanyahu and, and the investigation? And can he shake this thing off? Will he be able to survive this? Well, if I, if I were to quote someone Tove, uh, Tove on it, and I have to, I can't say it verbatim, but I can say pretty, pretty with at least a gist of what he said to me on our last interview with him. He said that at this point right now, 
the uh, Orthodox community no longer supports the Prime Minister. If he were to run into an election again, he would lose. Because that has been the backing of the Prime Minister of Israel, has been the Orthodox community. Much like President Trump has the evangelical community that has been behind him, but he's also losing in support. Uh, not to say that President Trump hasn't carried out a lot of the things that he said, but when it comes to the issue of Syria, that's where he's been losing at. And, and of course, with Russia, the Americans want the peace with Russia and they want to see the Syrian war come to an end. But in the case of Prime Minister Netanyahu, Samantov said that he is the man for the job. He said, now, let me clear. He wanted to clarify this. And he said, I'm not saying that what he's going to do is a good thing. He said, it's not going to be a good thing that he's going to do. He said, but the Lord had revealed to him not too long ago that Israel had made, fulfilled the scripture, and I forget where it was at, but he said where they have made a covenant with death and hell. Wow. Now, what did he mean by this? Because he does explain it in the interview that we had with him a, few, a couple of weeks back or a few weeks back. He said, what do I mean by this? He said, something has got to happen in order to drive Israel to her knees. And he said, we have never seen the scripture fulfilled where two thirds of the nation of Israel will be killed as a result of a war that comes against it. And he said, I am convinced, that was his words, I am convinced that Prime Minister Netanyahu is going to cause a war against the, the state of Israel that will actually fulfill that prophecy. Wow. And I can see where he's coming from on this because at this point right now, this is something that I think a lot of people have overlooked. Israel has two of the most strongest allies in the world. And that's the United States, which is the strongest ally in the world. And second to that would be Russia. And a lot of people think, well, Russia is the bad guy. They fail to realize the relationship between Russia and Israel because two million Jews in Israel are Russians. Right. The, President Putin was the first Russian president or Russian leader to ever to recognize uh, the Jewish people in a way that no other uh, Russian president ever has. He actually built a museum of tolerance and remembrance for the Jewish people. Yeah. He has allowed Israel to carry out strikes against the Iranians That's inside true. of Syria. That's true because he's concerned about weapons being smuggled, although he is a friend of Iran. Right. But at the same time, Israel has always conducted the strikes in a, with direct agreement with Russia. And yeah. at this point here, the, now we're running into a situation where uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, he, you know, whether his fears are legitimate or not, I do realize there is a major threat with Iran. I don't want to downplay that right? by no means. But nonetheless, what Saman Tov is saying, that he will be the man that causes this regional war to get started. I can see where that's coming. Because right now, France, America, and Britain are in the, in the Gulf regions, both the Persian, the Red Sea, as well as the Mediterranean from after the strikes that they just did. And we know, as you were sending me earlier, Pastor Paul, I, uh, Jeremiah 49, which speaks about Iran and this, uh, this annihilation that would drive them to the four or the four qu quarters of heaven come against them, which is the entire globe. Right. All right. But yet at the same time, before that happens, we have the prophecy in the 23rd verse of that speaks about there's trouble on the sea and it can't be quietened. That's right. That's Damascus. So that's going to happen first. As, as the little boy Nathan said, Syria will be the flashpoint. So let me ask if, you, so, so, okay, so you're taking Jeremiah 49, which we actually read that in our first hour. We read, we started at verse 23 and we went through verse 39. You're right. You have two things. You have two major prophecies in the same chapter. 
which I mean, I believe there it's because they're in the same time frame of that we're in. And it even says in verse 39, in these last days, this will all happen. You're right about Syria. Syria is the flashpoint. Damascus, there's sorrow on the sea. You know, they're setting out there with their missiles and we're, we're, United States, the British, the French, uh, they're there. Russia's already in Syria with Iran. Uh, you have the Turks up there in the north. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody. And then you got all these rebels and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusa and ISIS and the Free Syrian Army and uh, the, the rebels and uh, whoever else is out there. Uh, Hezbollah is always lurking. So to your point is the flashpoint is Syria. This is where it explodes from. And it will spill over into Israel. There's no way around it. Israel, it, and I was sitting there looking at another prophecy, Stephen, where it talks about a highway from Egypt and through Israel and Syria, and there uh, and there has to be this agreement. And, and God begins to bless. He blesses Israel and He blesses Egypt and He blesses Syria. And I was sitting there reading that again the other day, saying, "How in the world does this happen?" And then I'm finding out that Russia has put has built the most largest storage grains of uh, corn and grain in Egypt, and they're building a railway, a railroad from Egypt to a city in Russia. And to do it, you got to go right through Israel and Syria. And I think that's some of that rabbit trail that the, those those <laughs> those uh, what look like. Uh, uh, checkpoints that you and I seen in Israel might actually be tied to this highway. I would call it a highway. It's actually a railway. Um, I don't know where that fits in. I don't know how that fits in with the, with Syria, Syria being the flashpoint. Maybe it's after this settles down. I'm not sure, but I guess it's the chicken and the egg. Which happens first, Damascus or Elam? Uh, and the other question is, which happens first, Psalms 83 or Ezekiel 38? I mean, people are still arguing about these things, and are they all kind of coming together? Well, I, I think I might know the answer to both those questions, actually, Pastor Paul, because right. if you look at what's happening in Jeremiah chapter 49, uh, it's actually Syria begins first, and the, but it's actually a simultaneous event, because you got to remember, Israel is going to start the war with Iran, in Syria, yeah, Israel's yes. not going to strike Iran directly. No, because the way the prime minister can actually justify his his uh, war with with the with the Iranians is by targeting what is considered a legitimate threat for the Israeli people, and that is an is an Iranian air force uh, closer to the Israeli border. And now, originally, the prime minister said he didn't want anything closer. I think there's either 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers to his border, but he's actually reaching beyond those reaches because of the air force that Iranians have there in Syria. Uh, now, the other issue comes down to is the S-300 system that Russia has been willing to or are considering now supplying to the Syrian government in the wake of the latest U.S., French, and British airstrikes on the government for an alleged chemical attack that a lot of controversy surrounds right now. And as, as I say that, Pastor Paul, uh, they're one of the uh, defense, former uh, defense, um, I don't know if it's defense minister of Israel or, or an aide of, of defense, stated that Israel would be forced to bomb the S-300 systems if it were to be brought into Damascus or into Syria, period. They would be forced to do it, which would jeopardize, as they say, the relationship with Russia. Now, that would fulfill prophecy when it speaks about the, Demar the bars of Damascus are broken and she's yeah. taken away from being a city. Yeah. So I think that the move of the S-300 is what brings that about, which it kind of may brings up, let me answer one question too, Pastor Paul, because a lot of people have been asking this question. It's a question that I was curious about as well until the Lord revealed it. If you look at Isaiah 17, Damascus is taken away from being a city but as you read down, you find out that God is not pleased with what happens there. In fact, he goes so far as to say in verse 10 that 
it, it, the reason it is done is because Israel, not speaking of just the country of Israel, but all 12 tribes, which includes the British and the American governments, have forgotten the God of their salvation and 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 also the rock of their straw. Or the, let me actually pull it up so I read it correctly. Uh, this is very critical verse here, and the reason I say this is because it it really has caused a lot of questions because there is a there's clear prophecy that Damascus will be brought down. Right. Right. Uh, and at the same time, in I, what is it, Joel that brings about the bars of Damascus? But the issue comes up as uh, God says He's going to punish Damascus for for her sins, yeah, for three transgressions and for four. He would not turn it back as a result. All right. So then, the question comes up then: If God in Isaiah 17 is not pleased with Israel for destroying Damascus, how does that line up with biblical prophecy? Well, here's where it lies at. It's actually verse 3, the fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, there's a lot in that verse itself. Ephraim right. Represents the house of Israel that believed the report of Jesus, of course, recorded in Matthew chapter 4. And so the Christians that are living in Damascus are the ancestors of the house of Israel, although we know the house of Israel has been scattered all the earth, right, right. but they're remnants of those original forefathers. And God says their fortress is broken by the breaking of Damascus. Wow. So even though God says he's going to bring that judgment, because why? Syria threshed the children of Israel at Gilead. Yeah. In other words, they went beyond what they were supposed to, so their ancestors are paying the price. But then God gets angry at Israel, because why? He says, you have forgot the God of thy salvation, as thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy, the rock of thy strength which is Christ, which shows you that it's not just the modern state of Israel, but it includes those evangelical believers that back the U.S., British governments there, and French governments that are willing to come against Damascus. Why? Because you will kill and totally wipe out the Christian community in Syria, and that's where you go beyond what God was looking at. So that's a great point, a great analogy on the, the remnant of uh, of the Jews that are, are in Syria that are actually part of the Christian community there in Damascus. And by going too far, uh, you're actually uh, bringing persecution upon the very seed of Abraham, if you will, through, through Yeshua, uh, which is so important, and God doesn't like that. And that's a great point. Stephen, I got to bring another part into this. The, the the Saudi crown prince, we got to bring him up. He's He's been extremely active. He's came to Washington. He met with the president of the United States. He spent a lot of time with Jared Kirshner. Uh, they hit off very well. They're both in their mid-30s. I think uh, Kirshner might be 34, 35. Uh, Salman is uh, 32. He's, he had dinner with 50 rabbis in New York. Unbelievable. Orthodox rabbis. He's met with the, uh, you know, the, he went out to West Coast. He met with Silicon Valley. He met with all the tech giants. He met with guys in Wall Street. He starts talking about a covenant. Uh, uh, must be a peace. We have to have a peace treaty. We have to have a covenant. He almost is basically saying we have to have a covenant with many. I mean, you can almost hear it in his words. He says Israel deserves to have all their land. And then Jerusalem should be their capital. But his father... The king of Saudi Arabia held a conference last week where he said, look, East Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine, okay? So he threw the gauntlet back down, although he's up in years and won't be around much longer. So we know he's going to not last. The, the, the Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, will become the leader of Saudi Arabia. He wants to revolutionize Saudi Arabia. He wants to more modernize it. He wants to build this utopia out there in the middle of the desert by the year 2030. And he keeps talking about this covenant. We have to have a peace agreement. Israel has to be a covenant with a lot of nations, a covenant with many. 
Is it possible? And I'm not saying he's the Antichrist or anything, but doesn't he play a major role? It, it, what he's saying is kind of what is coming to, according to biblical prophecy, God may be using him or he just, or God may just prophesy that he's going to do it. Didn't mean he's being used by God, but he's actually fulfilling biblical prophecy. Do you see Saudi Arabia? And oh, by the way, remember, Iran and Saudi Arabia are arch enemies. You know, Avi Lip going to tell you that right now. That's going to be a war yet to come. I mean, think about the Houthi rebels have been firing missiles into Saudi Arabia at Mecca. They're literally trying to hit the stone. I mean, they're literally trying to blow it up, which I've heard Avi Lipkin say. So where do you see Saudi Arabia? Do you, uh, do you, where do you see them? What role do they play? Or maybe they just part of the organization of the covenant with many. They just play a major role in that process. Or do you see a war break out between Iran and Saudi Arabia and spilling over into Israel? I mean, how does this work? Well, it's definitely going to be a war with uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia is going to be a major player. Uh, Israel has bombers sitting on Saudi airport runways already as we speak, waiting for this war to take place. And the other thing I can tell you when it comes to the, uh, the prince as well as his father, the king, they're actually not uh, against one another. They're just playing two sides of the coin. Remember, uh, the prince is taking the part about the Jews in Jerusalem, but he's not really uh, clarifying the fact that there's only going to be uh, East, or excuse me, uh, West Jerusalem going to the Jewish people, right. whereas his father has to step up and look like the true Arab leader to play the part for the other side of the family, which is bringing about this regional block that they're making, a regional block of nations, and they're going to bring the borders down. You're this is Stephen. why, Pastor Paul, they Stephen. have to destroy Syria. And again, to me, that's a demonic move. Yeah. Stephen, real quick here, because I, you and I both co was covering this when John Kerry was Secretary of State. You know the prophecy. Rebecca's with child with two children. And, and, she's, and she doesn't know that. She's struggling. Uh, and, and the Lord says, in your womb is two nations and two manner of people. And one will be separated from the other. You and I both were covering at the same time because John Kerry had put this nine-month process in play. He's certainly talking about a two-state solution, I believe. I believe that, that even though I don't want to see Jerusalem parted, I don't want to see the land parted. I don't want it. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm against it. I don't want it. I don't want it. The Bible says don't do it. But basically, prophecy says they're going to do it. I mean, um, and and how does that play out? Does it... Is that going to be, is this two-state solution that, that's, that uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick liked to broke the desk on when I asked him the question, you were there with me in the Knesset in his office. I mean, eventually, if you're going to have a block of nations participating in this process, this covenant with many, you have to also give the Palestinians something, and you got to let the Jews build their temple. I mean, isn't this all coming together here? Well, look at it like this, Pastor Paul. When I actually, myself, and I know you had mentioned this as well, uh, about Rebecca's prophecy, a lot of people never looked at that as being a prophecy, but it really was a prophecy, and the prophecy did not fail. No. Let me make it like, like that. Let me first just read to you real quick uh, two sentences. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? That's from Obadiah chapter 1, verse 6. All right, so Obadiah identifies who Esau really is. And then uh, Obadiah goes into the fact that Esau stood aloof while the second temple was destroyed and the temple treasures were carried away by Esau, which was none other than Titus, the Roman general at the time, and following in his footsteps of his father. Now, as far as the prophecy, if you remember, John Kerry, when he announced the nine-month negotiation, the thing is, everybody had their eye on the Palestinians and, of course, the Israelis as the two-state solution. But I followed it up when the Pope of Rome entered into Mount Zion less than 30 days after the article came out that said John Kerry's nine-month negotiation failed. That was false. It actually was a success because the Palestinians are not Esau. 
Esau, according to Obadiah, are the ones that destroyed and carried away, actually stood aloof, so it's not the Syrians. So it was the Romans that carried away the treasures of Israel. Right. And then the Pope of Rome came to Mount Zion above the tomb of David and yep. held a communion service as a victory celebration yes, to that scripture being fulfilled. And, of course, as Obadiah also prophesied that one as well, Pastor Paul, he goes down to, if you get down to verse, uh, I believe it's verse 16, he says, For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah. All right, in Hebrew, that's, uh, I don't have the Hebrew in front of me, but it's actually in the masculine plural. And the Pope tried to reenact the same events of Christ in the Last Supper. Yeah. He had only men present at that a particular meeting that he did there when he broke the bread and he did the communion service there. And so he was fulfilling prophecy right there as well as Rebecca's prophecy. Two nations were born, and that's what brings about the New World Order. He was showing you where the New World Order headquarters will be on Mount Zion. You know, Stephen, what a great point. I know you were excellent covering that. And you and I both were in that room. That's the upper room. It's known as the upper room if you're in Jerusalem. The upper room sets up there right on, right above the tomb of King David. And uh, we were there. Steve and I were standing right there where the Pope had been and talked about the fact that when the Pope had that communion, he had it just with 12 cardinals. So just like the picture that Brock is showing you there, the Pope was taking the seat of Jesus Christ and he had 12 cardinals with him they were taking the communion and to stephen's point this was a celebration this was a proclamation that uh that city would belong again to rome and uh you'll notice everybody seems to go to rome every time every new president every new leader every new prime minister they got to go to rome and uh there's some things in play that we can't we can't change it. We can't stop it. We can only tell you it's fulfilling biblical prophecy. Stephen, we're running out of time, so I got to throw a couple rapid fire questions at you. Number one, people want to know. Inquiring minds out there want to know. Stephen, <laughs> will there be a third temple after the U.S. Embassy is the ribbon is cut? Will there be a violence in the streets of Jerusalem, a reaction, or will this just kind of go kind of quiet? I think, Pastor Paul, they're going to build the third temple after the war with Iran. Uh, this will be uh, once they have conquered Syria and they've conquered Iran. And again, I think that is totally demonic what they're doing, but they're trying to fake a millennial reign. And so they will bring a third temple. At that point, what's left of Israel, which, by the way, if you look at Isaiah 17 and that verse 3 again, uh, Israel shares in the glory of the, of, the, of the children of Syria, will share in the glory of the children of Israel. Yeah, but yeah. then it says that Israel, in verse 4, I believe it is, that their flesh is waxed lean. I think that also represents that this war on Damascus also brings about a massive loss of life in Israel as well. And that's when they'll build this third temple, because at that point, they really, what they would like to see, and this is something Dr. Pigeon uh, was saying on our broadcast, that Russia and the United States, they want to see them go to war. And they want to do it because they're trying to bring a nuclear war that will bring about a destruction of nationalism. And therefore, they can bring out the New World Order. Fascinating answer there, that the Third Temple will be built after the war uh, with Syria and Iran. And of course, the, the war with Iran would be in Syria. So... And there would be a lot of devastation, loss of life. That's a, a fascinating answer. And does that mean then the covenant with many gets signed after this war as well? That's, that I would think, Pastor Paul, that's where it is. And maybe let's throw in real quick because I meant to answer this as well for you. Psalm 83. Psalm 83 is something that has been going on for a long time. Psalm 83, if you'll notice, is a confederacy. And, there, and Israel is crying out to God, be thou not silent. And why would Israel cry out to God, be thou not silent? Because the prophecy according to Samuel, the prophet, was in that day, you've elected your king. He says, in that day, you will cry unto your God, and he will not hear you. 
And the king that Israel has brought into power, which it wasn't Israel alone, it was also the evangelical community that it helped do it in a very sneaky way, was they crowned the Pope on Mount Zion. I used to think it was Netanyahu because uh, Mike uh, Evans anointed him to be king of Israel uh, and said he would actually rule over Israel two different times. But it's actually, it was the one that wore the crown was the Pope of Rome on Mount Zion. There is the king. So until the king fails, which is where Psalm 83 comes in, because Esau, again, is the one working with the Arabic nations, which, by the way, is Saudi Arabia. Isn't it interesting, Pastor Paul? Seven Gulf states. What did Moses do when he came down to uh, to, to Midia? He met with uh, his, his future father-in-law who had seven daughters. It makes you wonder if we don't have a cyclical event happening in modern days. Amazing information, folks. Stephen Bendenoon. Stephen, I appreciate it so much. I mean, you really, really staying on top of these current events, keeping us informed, watching what's going on, looking at it from a biblical perspective. And as we go forward, uh, I'm sure you, as well as myself and others, will stay on top of the events to keep... People ask me, how, where are we at in biblical prophecy? Just watch Israel. It is God's prophetic timepiece. Stephen... Yes. Give my love to your wife, your children. We're praying for your wife's complete uh, restoration and healing. And uh, we'll be seeing you again later. Thank you, Pastor Paul. We love you and your family as well. And blessings to all of those that are watching today. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Stephen Bendenoon, folks. He's just a, he's wonderful. A wealth of information and prophetic re, uh, outlook on what's taking place around the globe. And as there's 2,200 of you that are with us live on YouTube, as you're hearing these things, obviously we're gathering information. We, we know the scriptures. Then we look, at the, we look at what's going on in the world and we say to ourselves, how would that scripture get fulfilled? And there's no way to know until certain times you get further into the process and then you say, oh, that's why that says that. And folks, that's what Jack Van Ippie did for almost 50 years. And that's what exactly we continue to do. Except Jack would say, 35 years ago, he would say, you're going to see a day coming when this is going to start happening. And people just shake their head and say, I don't see how. Today, we're like, Jack was right. It is happening. And today, let me tell you what's happening. Because today, let me tell you. And today, this is what's happening. It's we're reading it right off the pages of the Bible. We're in the last days. And some of you watching right now. And I'm telling you, these next three weeks, you better keep your eyes wide open. That 14th of May that's coming, the Lord only knows what's going to take place the few days prior to it and the, and the few days after it. And what does this mean? I've been saying for eight years that once the United States declares Israel as the capital, and once we move our embassy, that this would be the major door opener toward the building of the third temple. That had to be done first before that temple could be built. And I've been saying that for eight years, and now it's about to happen. And now how long does it take to get from there to the next point? I don't know. Stephen has brought up another thought process, another concept, and that is a war could break out first between Israel fighting the Iranians in Syria. And he's got some scriptures that may support that. And he's saying that might have to happen first before the third temple is built. And he could be right. Or it could be that in a, they say peace and safety, a, a covenant with many is signed, war then breaks out, and then the temple gets built anyway. Or war comes after the temple's built, maybe at the 1260-day mark. Who knows? We have to wait as things develop. But one thing's for sure, as I did that video, Rapture Ready, you want to be ready for the Lord is coming. You, anyway, death is coming. Either way, you got to be ready. And we're going to get a song right now and give you an opportunity to do that. Because Jesus said, if you die in your sin where I'm at, you cannot come. And to think that the prophecies of the Bible are happening so fast, so unbelievable. And God has blessed us to have connections uh, with rabbis, with Knesset members, with uh, folks like Samantov and Avi Lipkin and uh, different folks that are in the streets of Jerusalem and uh, Glick and uh, all the different connections there, Zev Parat, all the different connections that are coming together, Stephen Bendenoon. Uh, and of course, you've got, got great teachers like Bill Salas, 
uh, Joe Rosenberg, uh, Jonathan Kahn, uh, all of these great authors are writing great information as we're all watching as it's coming together. We all know it's coming together. We're not sure exactly which piece, which puzzle goes first, but all the puzzles are right here. The, 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 the picture's almost done, and we, we're grabbing pieces now. Could it be this one? No, no, it's this one, but it's close. We're in the, this is it, the stretch run. We're in the end. And I'm going to ask you, are you saved? And would you like to become a born-again believer and be set free from the bondage of sin? So the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to type, I want to be saved, I will pray with you in just a few moments. I'll help you. I can't save you, but Jesus can. Right now, type, I want to be saved because we're running out of time. Christ is coming. Oh, he died for you and me. On a hill. Far away stood an old rugged cross. The Michael B wants to be saved. A suffering and shame. God bless you, Michael B. And I love there's others. Ellen Hughes wants to be saved. The Praise the Lord. Just come to Jesus. Sherry Arger wants to be saved. Bat Heck wants to be saved. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Oscar wants to be saved. Frank wants to be saved today. Praise God. Or is he rededicating one or the other? The rise of Atlantis wants to be saved. Michael Carr wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Anwar and family wants to be saved. Praise the Lord. Melissa B. Wants to be saved. There's others. There's others. Don't wait. Don't put it off. You need to be ready. You need to get ready, get ready, get ready. Because Jesus is coming. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. But we can see the day approaching. We can see the prophetic prophecies being fulfilled. Uh, Landy wants to be saved. Praise God. So I'll cherish the old We got Ellen Hughes, thank you. Till my this is your moment. Church, pray. There's some folks that want to get saved. They, they, they know they need to get things right. The, the Bible says, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation Leslie wants to be saved some of you are carrying around way too many things you know Satan wants to confuse you burden you and then lie to you and promise you liberty when he's actually giving you death James Saylor wants to be saved. Praise God, James. As we get another song, this is your moment. Call upon the name of the Lord and to receive Christ into your life. Why don't you lay things down right now? Why don't you come to Jesus? That's all right, Brock. Go ahead. Let's come right now. Come right now in Jesus' name. Anarchy wants to be saved. And family. Lord, I need your help today. Thank you, Lord. I can't see past all this pain. I have 14 names. Here's another one. Carolyn Thompson. My heart is overwhelmed. Thank you, Lord. 
I can't make it one more day. Derwin Lopez wants to be saved. Derwin Lopez. Then I call upon Adrian you. wants to be saved. My tears Praise God. Come on. Away. Come on. Jesus is waiting. All my fears, they fade away. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Let me make it one more day. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy I and your grace. Make it one more day. When I take the time to pray, all my fears they fade away. I can see a brand Somebody's new heart day. is beating out of your chest, your knuckles are turning white. You know you need to get saved. Just don't wait till it's too late. I can't guarantee you you'll see this day tomorrow. I, I can't guarantee you the Lord will be knocking at your heart. I can now because He is. And if He is, you should come. You really should. And really, let's it's it's time. Let's get it over. With. Let's get the devil off your back and let's get Christ in your heart. Some of you need to come right now. Now I'm standing at life's road. I'm not sure which way to go. To the left or this to is your moment. the right. This is your moment. Only God knows what's inside. But I know your word is true. This is your moment. When I'm not sure. Gary and Nancy are rededicating. God bless you. Did I call upon your name? I have an announcement in just a few moments you to give you. Make it one There's some more that want to be saved. Break out. Break loose. Break free. We're getting ready to pray. We have 17 people that want to be saved. There's some families in that as well. And that's the ones we know about. There's some of you maybe you can't get in the chat room or don't know how, but you're ready to be saved. Or there's some of you watching this on the archives that want to be saved. You want to be saved today. And the Lord can set you free. I want you to pray along with me or repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Yvonne wants to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to come into my life, to set me free, and to wash me in the precious blood, and write my name in the Lamb's book of life, because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Christ died on the cross I believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. The, 
the Lord ascended into heaven and that Christ is returning again. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout and welcome to the family. These 18 new brothers and sisters in Christ. Count the stars, one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. Sees every sparrow that falls. Made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything. All creatures, great and small. He knows my name. Yes, he does. I don't know what tomorrow may bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. Okay, listen up. I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I know in who I have believed He knows my name oh. Every step okay. that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry We have an announcement for he you in just a moment When I'm overwhelmed by the pain I can't see the light of I want you to welcome these 18 brand new brothers and sisters in Christ. They must be dancing in heaven right now. Cartwheels down the Golden Avenue of Glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to the family. Welcome you into the family of God. Now we have, uh, I want to encourage you to get baptized. And uh, really, really, I want you to get baptized. Find a pastor, find a church. Find uh, somewhere in the community where you live and tell them you need to be baptized. Maybe it's a Messianic congregation. Look, you can send an email if you need help finding a place to be baptized. I'll be helping Coach Dave. We'll, we'll be baptizing people on, I believe, Sunday. I don't know, this weekend in Canton, Ohio. Um, but you can always send an email to converts.2016 at gmail.com. 
That's converts.2016 at gmail.com. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you need a Bible, send an email to MissZD01 at hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at hotmail.com. It's free. We'll pay the postage. Same thing with the, uh, uh, the prayer cloths, the blankets for those that are very, very ill, or the chemo caps for those that are going through chemotherapy. These are free. We pay the postage. We get it to the people, and God does the rest. Guys, we have an announcement here. Um, the Revelation movie launches tonight. The Revelation movie launches tonight. And Heidi just got an email or a phone call, one, from the producers of the movie Revelation. And they're very pleased that uh, from our website, you folks, over 1,500 of you signed up already for the movie uh, and you can still sign up now if you haven't signed up sign up right now and uh, they're just uh, it's, they're just very pleased with uh, the amount of folks that we were able to get to sign up for this movie it does look after having uh, General Boykin on uh, General Boykin was just incredible it was one of the best interviews I ever did I mean as far as just you know, there's been a lot of great interviews. We had a great one today with Stephen Ben the Noon. Just great information. But Boykin did a wonderful job explaining the importance of what's happening in our world today. And so uh, it should be a powerful film. Charlie Daniels is in it. Alex Jones is in it. General uh, William Boykin is in it. Several other actors and actresses. Some great uh, information. It will be a great film. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I can't wait to watch it. And so if you haven't signed up, get registered right now. Matter of fact, Brock, let's play the clip one more time. Play it again right now, and I'll be right back. Our society is moving towards Marxism. Because of what we did on this day, at this defining moment, change has come to America. Our revolution now becomes your revolution. Something's wrong, and we all know it. I'm Charlie Daniels, and I'm here to tell you about it. The nation has been hijacked by international forces. The dark side, bent on global governance. Alex Jones. What is the goal? It is to create a one world government. It's as old as time itself. Authoritarian officials with jackboots could say, your papers, please, and stop you and demand to see your ID. The Department of Homeland Security issued a declaration to all law enforcement, state, local, and federal, saying that the future threats to America were right-wing Christian groups, Second Amendment groups, pro-life groups, White Cop America, and returning veterans. While you still have time. Just think of this country again as one nation under God. America with borders, a nation of patriots that are proud of our heritage, our achievement. Now it remains necessary for all Americans to draw such a line in the sand. It's time to ride, boys. We need a thousand Paul Revere's. Revelation the movie. Dot info. No is a powerful concept. Uh, there you go. And again, Revelation, that movie will launch tonight. If you've signed up, you'll be able to watch it tonight. Sign up at our website there, and uh, you'll be able to watch it tonight. And uh, you'll be blessed, I guarantee it. I can't wait to see it. It will be a powerful film. And, uh, you know, it's just good to see somebody bringing out the, the actual issues of what's going on. It will open some eyes, okay? It will open some eyes. And hopefully, we can lead people to Jesus Christ at the end of the day. Amen. I want to thank you all for your support. If you'd like to give, 
keep this cyber revival going. 18 brand new brothers and sisters in Christ today that we know of. Just There's three ways to give. Why don't you go to my website anyway? You're going to go there. Some of you are going to go there and sign up anyway. Why don't you go right now and, and hit the donate button. Hit the easy button, as Billy Nightrain says. Give whatever the Lord has laid on your heart. Just give, and God will bless you going in and going out. Amen. All right? Or get your phone and go give another way. That's easy. Text giving. Just simply send a text with the word give to this number, 765-327-4200. That's 765-327-4200. Text the word give and Publicly Prophecy Ministries comes up on your screen or on your phone. You can give right there. Very easy. Very easy to give. Thank God for you. The Bible says to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. And for whatever um, um, the amount, whatever uh, you p- give, it that same measure be met unto you. Okay, so God, in other words, takes it, your seed and, of course, multiplies it. He's the God of uh, more than enough. Another way to give is to simply grab your checkbook right now or, or, and, and send a check or money order. And to write me a note or a letter or a praise report or a prayer request or a prophetic revelation. Send it to me. Put it in the mail today to Paul Begley Prophecy. That's Paul Begley Prophecy 1048-B. That's 1048-B as in blessings. 1048-B Sagamore Parkway West. That's Sagamore Parkway West. Box 33, that's Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana. That's West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. That's 47906. Love to hear from you. Just send in your tithe or your offering, or maybe you want to make a donation. Some folks are saying, Pastor, I need to plant a seed in the middle of my need. Obey God, okay? Obey God. God knows what you're Uh, responsible for, and God loves a cheerful giver. The Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And Malachi 3.10, I tell you that if you're a faithful and responsible as a giver in in the body of Christ, that God will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you. You won't have room to contain it. And he'll rebuke the devil, the thief, and say, get your hands off of my property over here. This is my children. Uh, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. All right? That's what he said in Malachi 3. Praise God. All right! I'm going to let you go. We've uh, just been an incredible day. There will be no live broadcast tonight. I'm actually traveling tonight, headed toward Canton, Ohio. No broadcast tonight, but instead, if you've signed up, you can watch Revelation the movie. It will be available for you that sign up and get, get locked in on that. So do that now and be blessed in Jesus' precious name. Brock Begley produced today's broadcast. I want to thank him for doing another great job. Stephen Bendenoon, pleasure to have him on the program. And we love each and every one of you. And welcome these 18 new brothers and sisters in Christ, plus many more that are giving their life to the Lord in Jesus Christ. Are you serious? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. Secrets of the Sacred Incense, an unbelievable, extraordinary journey to find the apothecary, the mystical caves in the Holy Land where the sacred incense of the first temple were discovered. Come with me on a journey that will literally enlighten you to the truth of the last days, the biblical ramifications of the third temple, all in this powerful DVD. Get a copy of it now at my website. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something, 
If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Prophetic Letters for America. This two-part DVD will raise the faith within you and this nation. From our founding fathers to our current president, America has been blessed with the power of the Word of God. You will hear some of their prayers, presidential prayers that each president prayed, and their faith of the Bible. You have to get a copy of this DVD and be blessed in the Word. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you.